really matters? That might be the most important question you can ask. So let's talk about it. Welcome to What Really Matters podcast, Everyday Spirituality with Karen Wyatt. Thanks for joining me here again today. This is a continuation of a series I've been doing uh, in talking about the wisdom from the Tao. And I'm referring to the original work, the Tao Tao Te Ching, which was written over 2000 years ago by we it is presumed a Chinese philosopher, Lao Tzu, though no one knows for sure who the author was. But this original book, the Tao Te Ching, is a book of 81 verses of wisdom that really talk about how to live life. And I have written an adaptation of the Tao called the Tao of Death. And I've incorporated this perspective of the full cycle of life from birth to death and specifically mention death in the verses that I've adapted in order to, in order in a way to make it a little bit more modern for our needs right now, which is the need we have as a society to come to terms with mortality and with the end of life. When the Tao was written, death was an everyday reality for people constantly in front of their faces and on their minds. And Now death has been removed from us a little bit and we have a need to always integrate and incorporate an awareness of death and the presence of death within life. And that's why I decided to write the Tao of Death as a modern text that we could use for contemplation and meditation to help us remember always, every day, the presence of death within life. So my adaptation also consists of 81 verses. I studied each of the verses from the original Tao. And um, in order to write this adapted version, and actually, it more or less wrote itself, I would say, came through me rather than me. Uh, coming up with all the words to say, somehow the verses were there as I studied them. So so I myself use the Tao of Death as a wisdom text and a learning text to meditate on and contemplate and to remind me how to get back to my own center when I get thrown off at times. And so this is a wisdom text, as I said, that came through me. So it's not necessarily that I even know or understand all of the lessons that it contains. So uh, I'm bringing you some of the verses here. And in this little series, talking about some of the major themes of the Tao that come up over and over again in various verses. So I've already covered humility, suffering, as a path to transformation, the need for inner work. And today I'm going to be talking about the concept of finding the middle path. And I encourage you to go back and listen to the previous three episodes because you'll get a really good feel for other themes from the Tao um, that that come up over and over again. And I'm also trying to show you how useful this little wisdom text can be as a companion for your meditation or contemplation or journaling practice. And I'll say it again, I've I've said this each time, but the way I recommend using this book of verses is to just read one verse a day or one a week, and then spend time writing about it and contemplating it and um, trying to glean all the wisdom you can out of the words that are on the page. So I'm going to share with you some of the verses today and talk through them with you. And uh, you can see how I go about processing what these verses have to say to us. So again, I mentioned today I'm talking about the middle path, which is a concept that gets mentioned over and over again in the Tao. And I'll, I'll read you some verses that will help explain that. Um, some of these are longer verses. Not all the verses in the book are long. Some are actually really short. Um, 
some of these longer ones may take several days to contemplate to work through all of it. But I'm going to but I like reading these to you because they're so rich and so full of meaning and wisdom that we can gather. So the first verse we're going to consider here about the middle path is verse number 29. And uh, I'll, I'll read it to you and I'll, I may take little breaks in the midst of reading it to explain things as we go. The way of death teaches this. If you wish to have control over life, he will not be successful. Life is a sacred mystery that cannot be controlled or held on to. If you try to force life to fit your plans, you will ruin it. If you try to keep life in your grasp, you will destroy its meaning. Understand that everything in the universe has its own flow and everything is in balance. There will be times when you are the leader and times when you are a follower. In some situations, you will feel strong and capable, and in others, you will be confronted with your weaknesses. Some accomplishments will come to you easily, and others will never be fulfilled, despite your hard work. On some days, you will rejoice in the beauty of life on planet Earth, and on other days, you will weep at the suffering and pain of humanity. If you are wise, you will follow the middle road instead of rushing to one extreme or another. You will not squander life's precious resources, but live in harmony and humility at all times. This is the way of death. And so what this verse emphasizes, the concepts that have come up before when we've talked about it of the harmony and the flow of the universe. And there is a balance within the universe. And the goal is to keep yourself as much as possible in balance, harmonizing with the flow of the universe. And and it's cautioning us not to go to either extreme. And so this means when, when things happen in your life, not to get too excited and too overjoyed by the good things, but not to be too devastated by the difficult things, but to seek out always a middle road, a middle path where you feel more in balance and you can smile and yes, enjoy the the wonderful things that happen, but you're also always aware that life is a mixed bag. There are all kinds of things because the universe is in balance. Uh, there are always challenges and always difficulties that arise. So yes, you enjoy and make the most of every positive experience, every wonderful thing, but you don't get carried away with that. You don't let your emotions get out of control and get so elated that you lose sight that, yes, this is wonderful and this is great, but there is also still suffering present in the world. Similarly, when something challenging or difficult happens in your life that you're really struggling with and you're feeling despair and sadness, you keep yourself again in the middle, on the middle path, more at equilibrium without getting completely overwhelmed and completely dragged down into the worst, most negative, desperate, dark emotions that you could feel because you're always aware, even while this suffering is happening, even while this challenge is here and this difficulty, there's beauty in the world and there's love and there's goodness and there's joy. You learn how to hold both of them in your hands at the same time. So you're always holding sorrow and joy together and you may lean toward one or the other, but you keep yourself as much as possible in the center between them because that's where balance lies and that's where harmony lies. And it's a matter of managing your emotions so that they don't go to either extreme because as this verse says, that's that's a waste in a way of life's precious resources. And when you stay in the middle road, 
you're managing your energy and your emotion and your love and you're not exposing yourself to the stress of extreme emotions on either side of it. And so I just, I just love this thought, you know, on some days you will rejoice in the beauty of life on planet earth. And on other days you will weep at the suffering and pain of humanity. But that the goal is actually every day to hold both of those things in your awareness at all times, that there is unbelievable beauty and sacredness on this planet and there is suffering and pain. So I think this for me is a really beautiful verse that uh, reminds me all the time, you know, stop trying to control your life. Stop trying to control things that you don't have control over. What a waste. What a waste of energy and time trying to control something that cannot be controlled. Instead, um, focus on staying in the middle and finding the beauty, the joy, and the pain that exists in the middle place, on the middle road. So um, that's, for me, this is a really profound message. And it helps me work toward staying calm and keeping my emotions managed, not suppressing them, not ignoring them or trying to shut them away, acknowledging my emotions and feeling all of them, but having this higher mindset that helps me keep my emotions in their place so that I can stay in a state of, of greater calmness. And um, it's, it's just so powerful, just a really powerful lesson. So um, next, let me see, which one do I want to read next? Um, all right, this, I'll go to verse 58. And again, this talks about the middle path, to keeping to the middle road. And um, again, uh, this is another long verse, but a more really powerful wisdom here. When your mind is open to new possibilities, your creativity thrives and you are free to be your true self. But when your mind is filled with rigid rules, you become a false self who tries to please others. And, and, and aside here, this goes back a little bit to the intellectual humility that we talked about. When you have humility about what you know, you're open always to learn new things. And that really helps spark creativity. But the more set you are in what you know, the more sure you are that what you know is right then you become more rigid and less open to new information. And that is what can lead to becoming a, f a false self in a way, instead of just an open learning being that's always allowing new information to come in. And, and so this is an example that all of these verses actually contain multiple themes. So I'm focusing on the theme of the middle path here, but some of our previous themes we've talked about also come up. So I'll, I'll continue on with verse number 58. The manifest world works like this. Light depends upon darkness to make it visible. Blessings are only apparent against the backdrop of tragedy. Darkness and light are intertwined. Death makes life precious. This is how it has always been. What appears to be true can turn out to be false. When we think we are doing good, we can actually be doing harm. This confusion cannot be explained by the human mind. The way of death teaches that everything, whether black or white, good or bad in appearance, is part of the whole of creation. Nothing is left out. Nothing is wrong. Therefore, the wise one walks the middle path. Be virtuous without being judgmental. Be consistent without being controlling. Be honest without being cruel. Be brilliant without boasting. Live life to the fullest without ignoring death. So, 
tons of tons of wisdom to look at here in this verse also. Um, the idea that the manifest world, meaning this planet where we live right now, where we live our lives day to day, and that is part of the external arc that we've been working on in our past. We live in this external world, even while we're trying to grow and develop our inner world on the inner path. But in the manifest world, it is a world of dualities, darkness and light, suffering and joy, death and life. And we have to learn how to live with those dualities. And ultimately, our spiritual path is to help us transcend the dualities to a place where we can hold them all at once. And I, and in the previous verse, I talked about that ability to hold sorrow and joy at the same time. Those are dualities. Those are opposites. And yet we have to reach a point where they're actually integrated with one another. We hold them both at the same time. We're aware of both at once and they become intertwined. They actually exist for us at the same time. We feel them at the same time. And so the next thing the verse explains to us is that everything, all of the dualities are part of the whole of creation. Nothing is left out. Nothing is wrong. We don't re reject the idea of death and dying or illness and sickness or difficulties and challenge because they're part of the whole. They're an important part of this whole spectrum and this whole circle of life. So we cannot leave any of them out. They belong. They're meant to be part of life. Nothing is left out. Nothing is wrong. And then the advice again is to walk the middle path. And so we find ways of expressing what is good, even while we're aware of the possibility of what is challenging and difficult and painful. And I really like these, uh, you know, this list of advice, be virtuous, have your virtues, value your morals and your ethics and what matters in life, but don't be judgmental toward other people who cannot follow that same path. Be consistent in your life discipline, have enough discipline to, to do things consistently that are good for you, for your health and for your mind and your soul. But don't be too controlling about it. Be flexible at the same time. Um, be consistent. Let people know they can rely on you and trust you, but don't overly control or get rigid about anything that you're doing. Be honest without being cruel. So tell the truth, speak the truth, but speak truth in a way that doesn't harm other people. And so do you tell someone, if you look at someone and to them, um, their face looks ugly to you, if that appears to be a truth to you, do you tell that to the other person? No, because that is not um honesty that's free from harm. In fact, if you look at another person and they appear ugly to you, the first thing you should do is say, what's going on inside of me that I'm not able to see the beauty in that other person? That's why you don't say it because what seems to be a truth to you in that moment may not be that may be arising from a wound or some pain inside of you that's blocking your vision, distorting your vision so that you're not able to see beauty. So uh, I think I, I like this. What, what a fine line it is to walk, to be honest without being cruel. So when we want to be honest and tell someone an honest opinion, we have to ask ourselves, it, am I doing this in order to, to be cruel? Is there a a wounded part of me that would actually like to hurt that other person in some way, even just a little bit, then maybe that is an opinion of mine that doesn't need to be shared. And um, the next one is be brilliant without boasting. So manifest all of your incredible light and show the world everything that you have. And just being you is enough to present 
who you are to the world. You don't have to brag about it or tell people how wonderful you are. You just are. You just are this amazing being that you are and other people can see it. But it's only the ego that likes to boast and likes to brag and make sure other people notice how wonderful you are. And then the very last line is live life to the fullest without ignoring death. And that's the entire reason that I wrote this adaptation, The Way of Death, because our society was ignoring death. And you can't live life to the fullest if you don't include death and incorporate death in, into how you live day to day and what you think about, what you focus on and what matters to you. So that last line is really essential for all of the work that we're doing here, being able to to celebrate life and love life and live every moment of it and get every ounce of, of meaning and joy and purpose you can from life. But don't ignore the fact that death is woven throughout, throughout every moment of your life and every breath of your life. That's when you'll be living with the most authenticity and honesty and integrity when you incorporate death because nothing is left out. Nothing is wrong. Death should never be left out and death isn't wrong. Death is natural and part of the whole picture. So that's verse number 58. Um, also just uh, really inspiring to me as I read it. And it always reminds me once again to return back to that simple center of wisdom that that is within me, but I can't always see it and I can't always be informed by it. But that's why having a text like this on hand is so valuable because you can flip through the pages and suddenly you find a verse that speaks exactly to where you are in that moment and tells you what you need to hear that day to get your thinking straightened out a little bit and uh, to help you get back on track. So I have one more verse to read here, which is verse number 68. A little bit shorter than the other verses, but this again, it reflects the theme of the middle path, being in balance and harmony. And so, you know, when I I start thinking this way about a middle path. It just helps me see it really clearly. The middle path is the place where everything feels balanced and where it feels like there's room for everything. And um, it, it has become a, a concept I like to think about and a place that I like to imagine myself being on that middle road, the middle ground in between all of the extremes. So we'll go on with uh, verse number 68. Those who know the way of death understand the art of balance. They have discovered that power is found within the tension between opposites, just as life exists between birth and death. They find their balance on the middle path. Thus, The greatest leader exhibits a balance between confidence and humility. The enlightened spiritual teacher lives in balance between compassion and discipline. The true healer works with the balance between science and mystery. The middle path is the way to peace because it makes room for every point of view. Seek the middle path as you balance between birth and death. That is the secret of living fully and dying peacefully. So once again, these themes, balance and harmony, and that whenever we take a pair of opposites, we try to find a place within the middle. And, and we're actually, when, when we seek out the middle ground in between opposites, we're actually transcending both of them. And we're, we're creating something new that comes from higher consciousness that incorporates these two opposites, weaves them together, and actually becomes something even greater and more amazing than the opposites were. And so the one that I focus in the most as a doctor myself is the true healer works with the balance between science 
and mystery. And this feels so vital to me because where medicine has gone astray in some ways is between emphasis is by emphasizing science and uh, negating the mystery of life and the mystery even of our human bodies and of illness and and all the possible things that can go wrong and all the possible ways that we can heal our bodies as well and so science is so important and very valuable and yet if we adhere so rigidly to the rules of science that there's no room for mystery then we're shutting down an entire higher consciousness aspect of life and we're limiting ourselves to what science has to offer so that's one of the concerns i have about about medicine that there has not been enough space made for mystery within medicine and so we ourselves as patients have to make room for the mystery ourselves we're not likely to have a medical provider who will talk to us about that or who will be allowing for the presence of mystery so that's something we have to bring into our own healing and another thing i wanted to mention from the beginning of this verse is the line that power is found within the tension between opposites and that's a reason to stay on the middle path because that's where the power is that's where there's actually creative energy for for making change happen for healing for love joy connection with others if we stay in the middle in between the opposites and not let ourselves get pulled to one side or the other so again seek the middle path as you balance between birth and death the middle path is the way to peace because it makes room for every point of view and this is the secret of living fully and dying peacefully um this is these verses are all so profound and there's so much wisdom here uh so this is what i wanted to share about this particular theme from the dao the theme of finding a middle path and staying in between the opposites but actually as you learn to intertwine them you'll be transcending those opposites and rising up into higher consciousness which gives you an entirely new amazing perspective on life and and all of its struggles so i hope you fi are finding this series helpful as i talk through this wisdom from the dao and i'll be back next week with one more session of going through the Tao of death with you and reading more verses and again the Tao of death is now available it's on amazon you can look up the Tao of death by uh, karen wyatt if you want to find it there if you go to eoluniversity.com slash books plural books uh, you'll find the Tao of death there and there's a link to uh, amazon where you can purchase the book as a paperback in print or an ebook the paperback contains some illustrations which are not part of the ebook but both versions of the book have a little workbook in the back that has journaling prompts for each one of these verses that can help you as you're contemplating and studying them so i uh, hope you're enjoying the series reach out and let me know if if this is helpful to you and i'll be back next week until then remember that we're here for love so face your fear be ready for whatever life brings you next stay on that middle road and love each and every moment of your very precious life bye-bye